Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Hard to Find for New Water Germany. Let us continue on from where we last left off. Well, 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 um, our spies got caught in Burgundy. We made friends with Finland. Overall, it's going pretty okay. Well, that's great, Landstead. I'll give out the order to divert more paper to bureaucracy. Our administrators will not suffer from the lack of paper anymore. Oh yeah, by the way, we don't have paper. <laughs> it's like we're playing Victoria 3. I just don't have enough paper for anything. Anyways, um, trains, we can up... You know what? We're on steady train, why not? Not that we're really going to need to worry about it, but... Just hypothetically... I mean, how many trains do we have? I don't know. How, how, many, how many trains do I have? Can you, can you tell me? Game? I have... That's fuel. I have... 151, that's okay. My struggle? Borman nostalgically stared at the book in his hands. It was a classic. Every German man, woman, and child should read it. That's what he's always said. Mein Kampf. A great book. But uh, how did it hold up? Looking at it now, Borman could find it a bit idealistic. It was filled with the creeds of war against the Jew and the Slav and the Genesis everywhere, but had Germany already won? And she had already been achieved, hadn't it? There were two answers to the question. One was, no, it hasn't. The answer was a militarist one. It didn't align with Borman's views at all. It was better than the other one, which was, yes, it has. This was even worse because it implied that Nazism was a failed idea, and the two answers to this book was question of unsafe board ideas that Borman finds unfavorable. If it was any other book, it could be banned, but this is the official book of the Reich itself, Hitler's masterpiece. But Hitler isn't alive anymore. There's a new Fuhrer, and a new Fuhrer has come up with new ideas. Do we go for a reformist or we get the militarist? Yeah, let, let's embrace tradition. I, I don't see why Borman would probably ban that book. Or not ban it, but at least downplay it. Again, Hitler's only been dead for like three years, four years. Like, it's not like it's been like such a long time that you can start slowly sweeping that stuff under the rug. Be like, eh, he died 30 years ago. You know, or, or, or whatever. Okay, the Iron Curtain. How will Sabbath lunch at the table with Krebs? What's next on the agenda? How will said uh, tiredly as he flipped through a short stack of papers? Forest? We're supposed to discuss forest? Well, you see, we at the Riker are experiencing a shortage of paper, and we need more wood for any source, uh, from any source possible. Upon your uh, entry into the pack, there's a verb, of course, we expect you to import wood to us. That's outrageous! Those forests are a national pride and joy. We need that wood, Krebs butt in. We also need the wood. We're running out of paper. And we desperately need more, Lang said. Our bureaucracy may suffer from this immensely if we do not resolve it quickly. He turned to Howell. Come on, Howell! Are you uh, tired of having to write so small to get camps? Well, yes, but we can't just boss around our Finnish friends like this. We can harvest some from Moscovin. Howell replied. Lang glared at him. Whatever, it would take an incredibly long time for the storage to subside if we try to use Moscovin more. Our infrastructure there isn't as it developed. Lang smiled at Krebs. Krebs sighed. Are you sure you want us to force it to do this? We won't take kindly to it. We can say, yes, you would. Okay. Yeah, let's just work the slaves harder. I, I can fill in. I want fill in on side. Okay. The enemy, my enemy. Let's get uh, France to be a little bit more favorable towards us. I was going to send you down south. If I had a nickel. By the way, does this event, because I don't actually have the decision trees unlocked, is it... Well, not unlocked, because I can't actually click on anything. Is this still ticking down? Probably, right? I don't, I don't know. Or maybe we technically haven't even begun the operation because I have not clicked on the button. Who knows? If I had a nickel. How was alarm clock rang? In the early morning, it sounded like a shrill of a banshee, calling him from a terrible fate. Uh, while uh, many would consider economic negotiation with the Finns a terrible fate, including Kowell himself, he followed his dull banshee's call and ended up on the negotiating table once more. Like beside him, no doubt to pressure the overwhelming Finnish foreign ministry even more. The Finns, despite their relative weakness, uh, were a much-needed ally in the Reich. Even if they only joined as an observer, their nickel, iron, and wood would be invaluable to our entire pact as a whole. It would considerably improve the Reich's economy due to a large amount of resources available for cheap prices. That is, if Hewell could get the Finns in the pact in the first place. So are you an observer? We got German military SJ, we got Finnish bunkers. Facing the night. The Sir Bradshaw's new paper smacked down on Mueller's desk, disturbing a thin pillar of smoke from his, from his full ashtray. He could not read the headline, but it was helpfully translated in French underneath. Nantes cannot de more confirmer réel. The headline was accompanied by a blurry black and white picture of police officers fishing a life raft containing whitish objects out of the lure. Mueller, uh, currently smoking uh, his uh, four cigarette this hour, did not bother trying to make out the details of the picture. He already had high quality color images from the Nazi police department splaying out over his desk. The half dozen chemically washed skulls grinning back at him. 
one was as his cap almost playfully splayed on top to drive the message home. He looked up his colleague who had brought it home. How about is it, Reinhardt? Again, I sat down and mentioned the Mueller uh, packed cigarettes. Mueller lit for him while uh, Ganon was talking. Not too bad, all things considered. Thankfully, everything can be brought, or uh, can be bought, including silence. The free press only gets their hand on the most bare bones details, or uh, anyway. We got confirmation from medical. Dental records match our team. We've contacted the French government and asked them to burn the skulls and send us the ashes. I made arrangements for distributed to the families. Mueller gave Ganon a cigarette and picked up uh, his own pack from the ashtray to uh, inhale deeply. Venerate animals, and I thought we were uh, hard. And I thought we were hard in the Gestapo. The fear had uh, will have my hide when I tell him we had to pull. Uh, we had to pull the plug. I gave him my personal assurances. Genel gave a sly smile as he knocked back some ash from his cigarette into the tray. Not necessarily hard, Rick. Give me a five million and a sig. Give me five million and a signature of recruitment from Officer Intelligence. I might have old contracts I can draw upon for a gamble. We can't keep playing all high stakes. Thing is, you give me a new special mission, which I can't actually do, but I'm gonna press it anyways. Or we can, yeah, yeah, do it anyways. So now we have two options. Now we have two special missions, neither of which I can actually press. So that's cool. I I love having things I can't actually do, even though the game's telling me I can do them. Okay, no roads lead to Petsamo. If you excuse me, we finished the request for Owen. Krebs took a breath. The railway potential hasn't been improved since the 30s, the 40s? It's still using Soviet era, Soviet Union era infrastructure. There's a problem in a lot of railways leading to Finnish cities. Krebs cleared his throat for a moment, gauging the reaction of Hewitt and Lange. Hewitt looked rather bored, while Lange leaned uh, forward in his seat, uh, listening intently. Luckily, we have a benefactor who will be willing to help us, Krebs uh, winked. If Finland is to join a pact and observer, we will let the Germans rebuild the railway. I don't know economist, but I think, uh, but I don't think uh, that it's uh, worth it for us. Okay. I think it's a good arrangement. $3.5 billion, that's fine. Okay. In the children's classrooms across the right, the next generation of airing youth are enjoying a particularly well-animated piece of national social propaganda. The work, Schutz und uh, Erblin, tells the tale of a black uh, eagle chick fiercely uh, hatched from his nest, or freshly hatched. The tree uh, that the black eagle lives in is the home of another nest in which a careless and lazy bald eagle chick lives. The black eagle's mother makes sure her nest is strong and stable and builds it on the thickest branch of the tree. The bald eagle's nest is built on the tallest branch with a little, uh, thin little twig that juts out just above the rest of the tree, uh, from where the bald eagle looks out from the ball looks out down on the black eagles. One day, a great storm comes, turning the sky black with dark clouds and shaking the tree on which the bout, uh, both the nests are perched. The black uh, eagle chick stays safe at his nest, swing only slightly. The chick safe underneath of his mother's wings. The weaker and taller branch that the bald eagle nest is built on sways wildly in the wind. And the bald eagle falls, unable to fly in the storm, and plummets to the ground unseen. The bald eagle chick looks up at the sky and sees the dark clouds in the, in the sky uh, begin to form into the black sun citadel of the SS, illuminated by lightning. The, the climactic music plays and the bald eagle's branch snaps, and the nest and chick fall down into the dark sky below. Once the storm fades, the watching uh, children witness that all the branches of the tree broke off, except for one, the strongest branch, which a black uh, eagle mother had widely picked. The black eagle mother talks to the children of Germany directly, telling them to listen to their elders and stay safe and protect from the storms that might be coming in their own trees. The chick agrees as he leaps out of the nest of his mother's behest and begins to fly for the first time, soaring among the bright blue sky. Okay, so... Presumably, the, the uh, Burgundy has killed the United States. At least that's what I got out of that. I don't think that's what it's necessarily supposed to be saying, but that's what I got. Okay, these two divisions send you over to uh, Orange Army. Excellent. Okay, undersigned divisions, free civilian factories, updates required, huh? Lance head at the table, listening to Finn's request. Our equipment is uh, drastic the modernization. Please, we need the Reich's help. Um, does make sense. I mean, I kind of want to just get Finland on side. I'm basically willing to do whatever the hell they ask of me. We need more hospitals. We need better uh, army bases as well. Let's go army base here, army base here, army base here. Yeah, let's put a lot of army bases on the border with Burgundy. That seems like that could be pretty important to things to come. Army coup in Peru. That's fine for us. You're way too ahead of time. We can take you. So Peru's had a military coup. 
and the Reichswehr plans. Langs got out the phone and sat back down the negotiated table, breaking the awkward silence that had hung over while Helwood and Krebs sat together, not speaking one word to each other. Hmm. Back off. Give, just give me the political power. Yeah. Political power is always nice to have. So we have now done the Burgundy Street. That's all finished. We can now go and um, try to have a detente with the Italians. I think that could be worthwhile. Detente with the Italians. I think this is like a detente with the Americans. Now, I don't believe we can detente with the uh, Japanese. I think we have to be uh, hostile towards them. But if we can get peace in Europe, or at least a cooling of uh, tensions in Europe, that seems like a good first step for us. Hey, Italy, do you want to fight Burgundy? Just just a thought, just, a, just an idea. Invite Nokia. We have another quest for own, Krebs declared. We like Nokia to be invited into your markets fully. Are you insane? The corporation will skin us alive if we do that, especially these diamonds. Uh, we, they're our primary supply in electronics. This is insane, and we as the Reich are uh, forced to. Nokia won't uh, even take up so much of the market. Come on. A Nokia. Yeah, get no Nokia. Sorry about this. You're not allowed into the Reich. We just can't do it. Intelligentsia, stop being hostile towards me, please and thank you. Diefenbaker regains power in Canada. Hello, John Diefenbaker, how are you? Okay. We, okay, we, we, okay, we have so many... We had so many events to read through. Okay, the Boer Republic. Following the resignation of Albert Herzog of the primary internal discontent within the uh, Headstrike National Party, the HNP, due to his closest with the, the uh, deceased Reichsbanner Hutig, the Prime Minister Party has designated Peter Wilhelm Botha as his successor. This development is positive in so far as Botha is recognized as the leader of the German file faction within the HNP and has requested to make office the official uh, readmission of the Boer Republic into the Einspach. Boer newspapers have largely attributed Botha's victory to the widespread sympathy for the electorate one, um, okay. All white, okay, so the extra is all white citizens over 21, and still holds towards the Reich for its role in achieving Boer independence. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. The Boer Republic has joined up with the Pact. Are they in my actual faction? Hey, look at that. In a visa-free uh, visa Finns. We want Finns to be able to travel throughout the Pact without the visa. Krebs blurted out suddenly. The other members of the Pact can do that. We want to do it also. Then join the Pact fully. Uh, that's the only reserve for full pack members, he will said boredly. Um, Krebs shook his head. We can't align with you fully. The Japanese Americans shutting off our markets would destroy us. We want to, but it just isn't possible. Visa free travel could show the unity between us even more. It's at the bad president. Uh, it makes it look like any member of the pack can just opt out of concessions. Hmm. Let's make an exception for Finland. Because again, I want to be friends with Finland. It just, it just makes sense for us. And the Italian Thorn. Holding a cigarette with two fingers, Martin Borman looked at the map of Europe in his office once more. With its conquest retaken and secured, the Reich has once again the master of Europe. But its rule is not without its challengers. He focused his attention on the old nation of the Caesars and his vast colonial empire. Its tentacles spread out across the Mediterranean to strangle the Aryan power and influence. Ungrateful bastards. We gave them weapons, taught them battle techniques, and endowed them with knowledge of the Aryan race. We made them who they are now. Borman scoffly blew a puff of smoke over the Italian parts of the map. On the other side of the table, Walter Hewelo kept scrambling through the papers of his files. I just remember how enthusiastic they were about our alliance, and they had the Gauls would ban it when we needed them the most. Members of approval uh, filled the room as the Reich ministers agreed with Borman's assessment of the Italian treachery. There must be something about the Mediterranean race that makes them treacherous leeches, my Fuhrer, Baldre von Schitter's hatefully proclaimed. With a smirk of satisfaction, Hewell grabbed the paper he was looking for and closed the file. Uh, fortunately, our ministers have developed approaches uh, to deal with the issue. We can keep our current confrontational position to uh, ensure the Italians don't bite up more than they can chew. However, we can also try a tante to keep cordial relations. It would be inconvenient for us if the Americans or Japanese got a foothold in the continent. Whatever the case, they'll eventually come back to us crawling, but the final decision is yours, mind Fuhrer. Okay. I think we should attempt the detente. See if we can get Italy to not be... Um, Hostile towards this, or at least not as hostile. We can break the ice, relax trade restrictions, meet with diplomats. We got a lot of cool stuff going on here. Okay. We got an economic summit with the pact. Lang smiled as he greeted the rest of the representatives from the pact, as well as the Finnish representative present at the summit. 
They would all uh, discuss what to do about the Pax economy. After the hours of talks, they would all agree to whatever Lang said with virtually no compromise or disagreement. It was a perfect opportunity for to get the Finns in, surrounded by PAC members eagerly discussing economic benefits as well as pressuring to meet uh, diplomatic, or uh, pressuring the meek diplomat into sending into the fields he didn't specialize in. It'd be like taking candy from a baby. The wait a moment finally came. The Southern focused on the treaty with Finland for a few hours and then pressed it to Krebs. Krebs took a breath and said, "Come on, spill it." Finland, are you in or are you out? You better get, you better be in. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, these two visions, we're going to still send you over here. An adequate response. All right, Krebs said, Langs had held. Uh, he knew that Krebs would sign a treaty, but didn't stop him from worrying. Great, uh, was all that he could say as Krebs slowly signed the documents. Lang couldn't help but notice that uh, the regret in Krebs' eyes. Krebs obviously wondered if this was the right choice for Finland, if he was doing the right thing, or if he should have refused instead. Lang smiled. Krebs thought he uh, had made a choice in the first place. The rest of the summit went off without a hitch. Lang dominated the discussion and it resolved well. Lang looked out the window of his car. As he was leaving the summit, he uh, see ejected Krebs stepping out of the building. A happy sight. Well, welcome, Finland. Welcome, welcome. So you're now in, in the Einz Pact as a observer state. And I'm happy about that. They are not, they're not as thrilled, but we're thrilled. Okay. But I think with that, this is a really good time for us to end off this episode for today. So if you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Not enjoy, click thumbs down. If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.